Perfect. So the, this next talk will be given by Jean Trinquier, who is a PhD student at Ecole Normale. And we will also talk about um, generative models and sampling, uh, this time in a slightly different context. Um, okay, so hello everyone. Thanks a lot for the invitation. So I'm going to talk about how we can use machine learning to assist uh, Monte Carlo and like uh, do efficient sampling. Uh, and I will also show that like uh, it fails at sampling like very complex problems. So the motivation is that, so we want to generate some equilibrium sample from a given uh, Boltzmann distribution that is like high dimensional and like that has a very complex landscape. Uh, for example, in order to compute uh, the macroscopic uh, properties of the system, such as the free energy, uh, entropy energy, but also it has, um, it has like a um, lot of applications in a lot of domains. You can think of uh, combinatorial optimization, for example, when you take the zero temperature limit. So of course, um, the universal strategy is to do like local NCMC. So for example, the Metropolis algorithm, you have uh, some acceptance rule um, and you start from a configuration and like you move until like you reach uh, another configuration by using this uh, acceptance rule. And usually what you do is to do like local moves. So if you want, uh, the new configuration that you propose uh, only differs uh, from the, the old one by like one uh, flip of a spin. And so um, the goal is like by this local exploration, you are hoping that you will like explore, explore the whole landscape uh, of your probability distribution. Um, the problem is that there are some hard to sample problems. Uh, typically you have like some high probability regions that are like separated by low probability regions. And the problem is that uh, if you do like something that is local, uh, you are going to spend a lot of time uh, to go from uh, one uh, region that has a high probability to another one. And uh, so there is, it's known that like uh, in some uh, model, um, the sampling time scales like uh, exponentially uh, in, the sims, in the system size. And so if you try to like do something using local MCMC, it's like completely uh, hopeless because uh, you will never like equilibrate. Um, so luckily there exist some system specific solutions. For example, you can try to identify some set of correlated variables and update them uh, like uh, all together. But by definition, it's uh, system specific. So you need to work a lot uh, on each problem to find the solution. And um, it's possible that it, there is no like such solution to, to speed up the sampling in the problem you are interested. So um, the idea is to do like something that is universal in the same way like that uh, local MCMC is universal. So you want to be able to apply it for every problem. So the recent line of research is to use machine learning to assist um, MCMC. Um, okay, so the idea is that, suppose that you can learn some uh, generative model, uh, P, A, R of sigma. Then you are going to use it to propose a new move. So in this case, uh, your transition kernel um, that tells you how to go from the old configuration to the new one uh, you are going to replace it by the um, probability uh, of generating the new configuration given by this uh, generative model. And so in this case, it's like independent of the old configuration. It's just like the probability of generating the new configuration. And because of this, uh, it's a global move because the old and the new configuration are independent. Uh, and so it's non-local. You're like completely moving in the landscape if you want. And so um, the idea is that if you are able to get a high uh, acceptance rate, you get a very fast decorrelation because you explore very efficiently uh, the, the landscape. So yeah, more precisely, suppose that we can find uh, such uh, generative distribution, PAR of uh, your configuration, 
So you want that uh, it covers well the support of the Boltzmann distribution because you want to explore uh, really the whole landscape and not just a part of it. And you also want that uh, it's very close to the Boltzmann distribution. So uh, I think we can summarize those two uh, conditions by saying that you want that the callback libeler divergence between the Boltzmann distribution and your generative model is small. Um, so this is like the first thing you want to, to do. And of course, uh, since you want to use this generative distribution uh, in, in order to propose moves, you need it to be uh, easy to sample. Um, and so one way of doing this is to use the um, autoregressic decomposition. So you know that like every joint probability can be written as this product of conditional probabilities. Uh, and you can learn uh, every conditional probabilities via some neural network. And if you do like this decomposition sampling uh, becomes trivial because you just need to sample uh, the first spin from uh, the probability distribution of the first spin, then you inject it in the probability distribution of the second, even the first one, and you iterate it until you sample the last one. So it's very easy to sample. Uh, now you, you actually need to learn this uh, distribution. And like I said, uh, you want it to cover the whole landscape and you want it to be uh, very close to the true uh, distribution. And so what you would like to do is really to minimize uh, the divergence between the Boltzmann distribution and the autoregressive distribution. And it's also the, the standard approach that is uh, used when you want to learn a generative model when you have some data. You do maximum likelihood, and it's exactly the same as minimizing the callback labeler between the distribution of your data points and uh, the, the generative model. Uh, okay. But the problem is that to do this, like to compute and to minimize this uh, divergence, you actually need to sample from the Boltzmann distribution because you do the average over the, the Boltzmann distribution. And it's uh, exactly what you want to avoid because uh, you want to be able to sample uh, in region where, where you cannot use local MCMC. So you, can, you want to be able to like get some equilibrium sample uh, when it's not possible to get it from local MCMC. So if you want, uh, you want, you want to be data free. Um, so this maximum likelihood approach is not possible. It's only possible at high temperature when it's easy to, to obtain a good sample from the Boltzmann distribution. Uh, but at least um, it allows to check the model expressivity at this high temperature. So this approach like, is not data free, it's only possible when you have some data. And uh, if like, you are able to get a good sample, like with a lot of independent uh, sequences that are like, representative of the landscape, um, the model is forced to learn um, all the regions of the landscape that, are, that is represented in the data set. So okay, one uh, way of um, like uh, solving this uh, data problem is to use uh, the variational approach. So instead of minimizing the divergence between the Boltzmann and uh, the autoregressive distribution, you do exactly the inverse. You minimize the callback labeler between the autoregressive and the Boltzmann distribution. And in this case, um, you are doing the average over the autoregressive distribution that is easy to sample, so you don't have uh, this problem. You don't have data, actually. Um, and so you can write this, uh, this callback labor divergence as a difference of free energy, uh, that's, uh, and you can compute the gradient of it. And so to do the learning, what you do is like, so you have like a first guess for your autogressive model. You do a first sample uh, of this model. You estimate uh, the divergent and its uh, gradients. You can update the model and like you stop the learning uh, when you like are below a certain threshold uh, on the, the variance of Q that is uh, here. Uh, and so Q is like uh, beta times energy plus the log of the probability of your model. And the idea is that uh, if the two distributions are the same, so uh, the Boltzmann and uh, the genetic model, uh, then, of course, uh, you get a zero variance uh, on this quantity because it's a constant. And uh, reciprocally, uh, if you have a zero variance, then the two uh, are equal on the sequences you sampled with your autoregressive model. 
but uh, that does not mean that uh, that is true on all configurations. And the reason is that it's possible that your auto equity model is like completely missing some uh, regions of the landscape and putting a zero probability uh, on uh, some configuration, uh, as you can see, for example, on this plot. And uh, it's possible because it's not hurting uh, the, the callback labeler divergence, because if you put uh, zero probability to some configurations, uh, it has a zero contribution to it. Uh, so this problem is, not, is known as a mud collapse. Um, and it was not the case in the maximum likelihood approach because if you like put some zero probability to some regions, uh, the divergence goes to infinite. So it can be partially solved uh, using simulated annealing. So you start at high temperature and you decrease it while uh, learning. But still like, and I will show an example at uh, the end of the talk, but uh, if you are like trying to learn some very complex model, it's very likely that you are like going to miss a lot of uh, the landscape. So this approach is data free, uh, but you might miss some parts uh, of the landscape due to a mud collapse. So uh, one solution that tries to take the advantages of uh, both uh, approaches is like to do some combination of uh, local MCMC and global MCMC. So there are a lot of ways of doing this. I put uh, two examples uh, on the slide. Uh, and what we did is called uh, simulated tempering. So it's not really data free, but what you do is uh, you generate a sample at the local MCMC at high T, where sampling is easy and fast. So you have a first uh, good sample, and you can learn a first autoregressive model uh, by maximizing the likelihood, so you don't have the problem of mode collapse. Uh, and then you are going to generate a new sample, uh, but at a slightly uh, lower temperature, um, using this global MCMC uh, update. So if you are able to get a good acceptance rate, you are able to like get a new sample at a slightly lower temperature, and you can iterate the procedure. You will learn a new autoregressive model, and you decrease the temperature, create a new sample, and uh, you do this until you reach the temperature of uh, interest. Okay. So then we need to choose some architecture. Uh, so you can do something very simple from uh, like a very shallow model with just one layer. And of course, if you need a more expensive model, you can go deeper. Uh, also like those kind of autogressive models, the, the number of parameters uh, scale um, as the system size squared. So it could be like a problem if you are trying to uh, um, generate sequences for a large system. And so there are also like some architecture that allows uh, to reduce the number of parameters by some shared weight uh, strategy. And also if you want, so it could be like a good idea to include uh, some, um, the, the, some form of your model in uh, some the, the geometry of your model uh, inside the autoregressive model. So uh, for example, if you are working with a lattice, it could be a good idea to do some convolutions if you are like working with a graph it uh, could be also a good idea to do some uh, graph neural network uh, with also uh, the, the autoregressive uh, structure. Okay, uh, so now um, I will first show uh, some models where it works very well, and uh, you can like speed up the sampling time by order of magnitude. Um, and then I will show like uh, more complex model when where all methods uh, uh, fail. So. Um, First, we reproduced uh, the results of this paper. Um, and the model is a 2D uh, Edward Anderson uh, model. So we have like a square lattice with uh, Gaussian couplings. And uh, what is interesting in this model is that uh, the reaction time of uh, local MCMC uh, grows very fast uh, when T is decreased. And you can see it on the, the last plot is the blue curve. Uh, so it's like the number of sweeps you need to decorrelate uh, in function of beta. And you see that for beta equal uh, 1.5, you already need more than 10,000 sweeps to decorrelate. And actually, it's not possible to go like uh, uh, to uh, higher beta. It becomes uh, too slow. So, okay, local MCMC doesn't work uh, at low temperature in this model. 
And so we applied this uh, simulated tempering procedure. So we start at uh, t equal one and uh, we slightly decrease the temperature. Um, and so to check that the model was like uh, a good model, we, we checked that we were able to reproduce the energy and the entropy uh, of uh, the true model. So you see like uh, the equilibrium uh, results are in uh, green. Um, and so of course after a certain time we cannot compare with the true value because we cannot do local MCMC, but we also uh, found that we were able like, to reach the ground state. Um, and, uh, yeah. and if you look at the acceptance rate, um, it's uh, the inverse of the acceptance on this graph, you see that like, it's going to one, meaning that basically you are uh, accepting every move. And so that means that you are more or less decorrelating in one step. Uh, even, um, and if you see like, like local MCMC needs like probably millions of uh, steps to decorrelate in uh, this region. <coughs> so there is like a real gain uh, of uh, computational time. Uh, and also you can actually sample regions where you cannot sample using uh, local MCMC. So it's also the case uh, we did exactly the same analysis for the 3D uh, EA. Um, and uh, this, despite the fact that there is uh, actually a phase transition in this model, we found similar results. So high acceptance rate, uh, we could reproduce the energy and the entropy, we could reach the ground state. Uh, and like uh, the local MCMC time uh, becomes like super slow. Uh, so, of course, we need to do like something more systematic on the system size. Maybe uh, these results are not true if like you go to large system size, but still like it shows that for um, models where like local MCMC is not possible, uh, using this strategy um, allows like to actually sample equilibrium uh, sequences. So then we wanted to see if it was the case wh when we have a really complex model. And so to test this, um, we wanted to see the class of model where there is like uh, some critical temperature and um, below this critical temperature, the sampling time uh, becomes exponential in the system size. And so in this case, like local MCMC is not possible at all. Um, and so we took uh, the coloring problem, that is uh, the anti-ferromagnetic pots at a uh, finite temperature. Um, so we have like some random graph with uh, connectivity 40, we have two colors. Uh, and and uh, so you want to penalize uh, the fact that two nodes share the, two neighboring nodes share the same colors. Um, and so also what, what we did this also because we can do something that is called uh, quiet planting. Uh, that is that we can prepare um, some one equilibrium configuration uh, for uh, any T, uh, and that's useful because like uh, below the critical temperature, um, because the sampling time is exponential in the system size, uh, it's not possible like to obtain equilibrium uh, configurations. And the, uh, with this quiet planting, the idea was that we could have at least one configuration and we could compare uh, the configurations we were sampling with this uh, equilibrium configuration. Uh, okay. So yeah, the, at the beginning we were hoping that uh, probably it was not possible like to sample in this zone, so like below uh, TD, but maybe uh, we were hoping to be able like to sample uh, very close to it uh, in a zone that um, already like is uh, impossible to reach with uh, local MCMC. But okay, now I will show that it was a, a failure. And so we think like this kind of model are, are a good benchmark uh, for future works to test uh, new models. Um, okay, so what we did is first to do some model selection. Uh, so at a high temperature, uh, at equal one, so in this case, the, the critical temperature uh, is around uh, 0.2, so it's like way uh, higher than the critical temperature. Uh, we tested a lot of models 
that uh, are present in the literature um, to select like a good model. Uh, so the first two plots shows like the learned energy and the learned entropy of a lot of different models. Um, and the goal is to be as close as possible as the yellow line that is uh, the equilibrium uh, value. So you see that at this temperature, there are a lot of models that are good, like they are quite close to the true value. Um, but it was already a little bit surprising because uh, we saw that like the best models were the shallow ones. We tested also deep, deeper models and also like some models with smart architecture like uh, graph network. And the best models were the shallow ones. Uh, we saw that like increasing model expressivity leads to overfitting. Uh, and you can see it because the entropy is too low and uh, regularization uh, leads to uh, underfitting. So, yeah, but okay. At least at this temperature, it was working. We had a good acceptance rate, a good reproduction of the thermodynamic uh, uh, observables. And then we tried to lower the temperature and uh, it fails. It fails because um, that to check uh, if your model is good, so you can do many things, but for example, what, one thing you can do is like take uh, one uh, sequence that is generated um, by local MCMC, that, so that is a real equilibrium uh, sequence, uh, run some local MCMC dynamics on the sequence, and then do the same thing, but uh, with one sequence that is generated with uh, your generated model, and check that they uh, exhibit the same uh, kind of dynamics. And so like in those plots, the dashed lines are the dynamics of the true equilibrium uh, sequences, and the, the lines are like the dynamics of the generated um, sequences. And so you see that uh, at high temperature, the dynamics are very similar, so the model is good, but when you decrease a little bit the temperature, like it becomes very different. So this is the maximum likelihood approach uh, the variational one is a little bit better, but it's like the same at low temperature, it's super different. Uh, and the, we explained this because what we saw is like the variational model uh, keeps a good entropy because it has to like reproduce the diversity of the data set, but it has a too high energy, so it's like the yellow line here, uh, while the, the green one is like the line you, you should reproduce. And uh, on the contrary, the Vassal model uh, is like mud collapsing. It has a too low entropy, so it's just like focusing on some regions of the landscape. Uh, but it's able more or less to reproduce the energy, and that's why it's a little bit better. Uh, the, the sample from the Vassal models are a little bit closer to the true uh, equilibrium uh, sequences. So the maximum likelihood fail. Uh, so it's a good model has a acceptable act acceptance rate at uh, high temperature, but uh, as soon as you try to decrease the temperature, the, the acceptance rate is like going to zero, basically, for all kind of model. Um, and we try to use like a larger training sets, uh, more expressive model, but everything um, failed. And in all cases, like the energy of the proposed configurations uh, is too high in comparison with like the energy of the equilibrium model. And the rational uh, approach also failed, but for different reasons. So in this case, you are able to get a uh, good acceptance rate uh, doing this uh, global MCMC dynamics, but actually you don't uh, decorrelate. Uh, and you can see it uh, in this plot. Um, so like the red line is a high temperature, you are able to decorrelate. Uh, this is like the number of steps in your global MCMC, but you see that for lower temperature, you basically like stay at one, and so you don't decorrelate uh, at all. And that's because you're just learning a very, very small portion of the landscape, and so you're just staying in this very small region. So maybe you can think uh, we are not able like, to expose the landscape, but at least we are able to sample some configurations okay in a very small portion of the landscape, but that gives us some equilibrium configurations. But actually, uh, this temperature is uh, 
way higher than the critical temperature and when we tried to decrease uh, the temperature, it was like uh, not even able to reproduce the energy. So uh, this is not collapsing and it cannot like uh, sample good configurations at a low temperature. So okay, so I think uh, this uh, very complex uh, models with a very complex landscape um, are a good benchmark for future works. So for the moment, uh, I think autogacy models do, do, do not seem to provide a good enough auxiliary distribution for sampling complex models, and there is no clear path for impro improvement because, so we try to do something more expressive, we try to increase the training uh, set size. Um, maybe it's uh, an interesting limitation of uh, the autoregressive structure. Maybe you can learn like a few peaks, but not uh, an exponential number of peaks. Um, still, there are some directions, I think. So first, we can try to simplify the problem. Uh, so instead of like trying to learn uh, how to generate uh, the whole configuration, we could try to learn to ge generate a subset uh, of spins, given its boundaries. So maybe it's a simpler problem. And also it's uh, interesting if you want to do something with a very large system size, um, because uh, you could just like try to generate some subset of spins in one region, then do the same thing in another region, and then you can like scale to a very large system. Maybe also it's a good idea to explore more complex uh, architectures, such as uh, the transformers. So we, are also trying, uh, we are also trying to do this. Uh, so um, they are very like powerful for language and also for biological data such as uh, proteins, but it's not so obvious. They are, they are uh, also working well for um, uh, spin uh, data. And then there was also this paper that is interesting, I think. Uh, so they try to um, reformulate the Boltzmann distribution uh, into an uh, autoregressive form. So they show that if you do this, you need uh, an exponential number of parameters uh, in the system size to like reproduce uh, your Boltzmann distribution. But then the, they also show that if for the Corey model and the SK model, they were able like to reduce uh, the number of parameters. Um, and they show that uh, it outperforms the naive architecture that you can try uh, using a, an autoregressive model. But uh, again, it's, it's uh, system specific, you need uh, to derive it for every problem. But maybe uh, you can try like, to use uh, the architecture they, um, they found for the, for example, the SK model on other problems, and maybe it's better than naive architecture. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yes. Um, for the examples on the SK model, do you know how your method compares to the something like the Mokta Che's clust replicated cluster methods mm -hmm. or simulated anneal like ordinary parallel and temporary or something like this? Yeah. So I think, for example, for this model, uh, like like you said, there exists some system specific solutions that are super like effective, so it's not really useful for this model. But I think like it's like comparable in terms of, uh, but we didn't compare actually, but I think it's uh, comparable more or less. But there are some models where there is no system specific solution, it's still useful, I think. Yeah. Um, I see that uh, evaluating the direct Kullback library is mm -hmm. impossible, no? Uh, so you invert it, if I got it right? Uh, so not really. So mm -hmm. in the variational approach, yes. But in this approach, uh, we are actually using the direct Kullback library because we start uh, at a high temperature with a true sample that we are able to generate via local MCMC, and then we decrease the temperature, but at each step, we are like minimizing the direct callback labeler. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. Any other question? Some, someone, it's the, the 
Oui, you, you saw the question or not? No? Okay. No, otherwise I was, uh, I was going to ask, do you, do you have an idea of a good uh, continuous uh, variable benchmark of, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we can, we can think of plenty, but uh, a good time model to also test this type of uh, algorithms in the continuous case. In the continuous case, not in the discrete one? Yes. I, I don't know, right? Well, yeah. we'll just <laughs> Uh, thanks, very nice talk. You mentioned that you were playing with transformers now uh, in this context. Play with, sorry? With transformers? I didn't quite understand if this was a perspective or whether it's something that you've already tried. Uh, and if you've started playing with transformers, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sorry, what, what model? A transformer. Transformers, yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, we, we are trying to do this. I think from now the results are a little bit disappointing because like shallow models are like a little bit deeper models uh, with the autoregressive structure are working for the moment better than transformers, but we are still trying. And what is also useful with transformers is that the input and the output size can be like uh, changed. So like for example, if you try to learn a subset of spin in like the graph, you can change the number of labels that uh, are on the boundaries, but you cannot do with like uh, the shallow model. So I think it's still like a good direction, but for the moment we don't have very good results. 